is the uh, is your thinking right now to stick with Cater as your nickel, or have you given much thought to opening the competition with Needham? Obviously, a guy who's done that a lot before. Your run. Yeah, right now it's uh, we're sticking with Cater. And, and he's played. How do you think? I think he's played good. What's your thoughts on Hard Knocks and uh, building? You know, I haven't uh, haven't had any effect on me yet. Um, they haven't inconvenienced me or been in my meetings yet, so it really hasn't done anything for me yet. I'm just, I'm sure it will at some time. Have you had it before? No, <laughs> never have. One game of Jalen Ramsey and, and Xavier Howard together. What was your review on that? Yeah, I thought they both played good. Um, I still think Jalen's going to keep improving. You know, he had such a long period of inactivity. There was good improvement from game one to game two, and um, we've talked about it, and he's going to just keep getting better and better. Vic, by, by my research, I counted seven interior defensive linemen around the NFL playing 75% or more of their team's defensive snaps. Two of those are Zach and Christian. Is there ever any concern about them maybe having too heavy of a workload? Yeah, at times there is. Um, a lot of it depends upon the flow of the game. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of D linemen on the active roster in comparison to other teams. Uh, you know, so they're they're capable. They've done it in the past, and they've done it this year so far of being able to log a lot of plays. Vic, um, I, I think this is as healthy as this defense has been uh, at this point moving forward. I'm, I'm wondering if what about the potential for this defense? Uh, do you think this could be like the rest of the way, like a top five defense in the NFL, or, or what do you what do you think along those lines? We just need to be as good as we can be, you know, and not really get caught up in statistics. But I do think um, we we are headed in the right direction, as you say. We have most of our guys back now. We went through our share of the injuries earlier in the year. And I'm optimistic going moving forward. What is, what is the area of this improvement that you've seen that you're the most proud of defensively? Just overall, we you know we've just gotten better doing some of the little things at every level of the defense, and when you do that, you end up getting good results. I don't you know there isn't one silver bullet that's happened um, that's made us better. It's just kind of been a collective effort. Vic, when you talk about the, the defense, um, what about the potential for this to be a game-changing, uh, big play defense? Because we've seen the strip sacks, we've seen interceptions, we've seen all of this stuff recently. Uh, looking ahead, is, is that the type of defense this will be? Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to be a defense that can take the ball away. Um, and we've, we've had our moments, as you said, where we've had some, then we've had some dry spells too. Um, and that's an area you know, that we definitely can improve on. And I think we have the guys to do that. Vic, with the background with Akeem Hicks that you've had, is that a name that you broached with Chris Greer or with Mike? Has that name come up in the building? Oh, a while ago it did, but, you know, it's never got any momentum. Or... What have you seen improvement-wise out of your two edge guys, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb? Yeah, in Jalen's case, he's just, um, you know, he missed those four games and, um, Took him a, a game or two to get his uh, timing back, his feel back, and you know, and I think he's playing really good now. And I think Bradley's played good the entire season. You know, everybody gets caught up in numbers at times, and he didn't have X amount of sacks early on, but he's had some here lately. But I think he's been playing good all year. Um, it's good to see for him. Happy for him. You know, he had a tough stretch in there in Denver. The three years we were together, he was hurt a lot and never could get into a groove. And now I think everybody's seeing the player that he can be. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the stats, the sacks maybe not coming at first for Briley. Um, I know there's like deeper metrics and analytics that say that he's always uh, applying pressure. Is that something that you subscribe to? Do you like do you look at those deeper analytics when you're kind of judging the off the defense or not? No, I don't look at the analytics part of it. I watch the tape, and I know if our pass rush is good enough or not. You know. the, uh, I don't know if streamlined is the right verb, but you used, I guess, 15 players on defense in Germany, 13 got significant snaps. Are you trying to essentially focus on the guys who are going to play uh, and give them a heavier workload? We've seen that, obviously, all year with Wilkins Sealer. Well, I think it goes back to his question there with the guys, you know, the D linemen. Usually most teams will rotate their D linemen. 
um, a lot, which ups those numbers that you just alluded to. You know, we're low on D linemen, so we don't do it as much. You know, so that's part of that. Um, but shoot, um, you know, the Raiders, great defensive player, Max Crabby, he never comes off the field. And it never affects his effort. So guys can do it. Another great Raiders player, a wide receiver, Devontae Adams. When you see him, uh, you see what? I see a great player. You know, I've you know, went against him all those years in Green Bay. When he was in Green Bay and I was in Chicago. And um, he's got great size, great ball skills, really good catch radius. He's strong at the ball, runs good routes. You know, he's definitely one of the top receivers in the league. The Raiders are going to run the ball a lot with Josh Jacobs. Uh, what do you need to do to get a, your defense prepared for maybe the physicality of the game with a lot of uh, runs going? You're yeah, right. we just have to come in with the right mindset. They're going to try and run the ball. Uh, that's what their uh, mantra is right now, and they've done a good job of it. Jacobs is an excellent back, one of the top backs in the league. They're doing a good job of blocking for him, both the line, the tight ends, and the fullback when he's been available to play. So it's, it will be a stern test. One thing that uh, Drum Baker said this week is he, he agrees w with you, obviously, about communication needs to continue to get better. He said it's good, but we need to continue to improve that. Who's the best communicator on your unit, do you think, Vic? Um, you know, I don't know that I have that answer, but it, it needs to be your inside linebackers and your safeties, and I think our guys are doing a good job. It's getting better. Um, part of that communication, too, involves getting the play call in on time you know, for my part to where they can be ready to go. Some of that is slowed down. You know, you get teams subbing often and you're not sure what's on the field. But I think our guys are communicating better, but I agree with Bake that it can get better even more. Vic, just out of curiosity, are, are you an analytics guy and why or why not? I look at it, but it's just a piece of the equation. It's not, um, it's not the end all be all, you know. Um, there's a lot of guys that give you the analytics, but they're just reporting what they bought from some service, you know, and they they uh, they didn't actually look at the tape themselves to verify. So I'm a uh, if you give me tell me something, I want verification and either you need to give me verification or I need to watch the tape and get my own verification. So I do listen to it. And if there's something interesting, you know, I'm going to verify. I'm just not going to take that as the gospel. Sometimes coaches say they kind of dig into the self-scout on the bye since you're not so focused on one opponent. I'm kind of curious, where, where is your mindset relative to we're going to do what we do best based on our personnel and or when do you say to yourself, I'm going to break my own tendency here on this drive or this play or this quarter? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you self-scout yourself every week, um, not just on a bye. And you have to weigh all those factors you just said. You know, what do we do best? A major factor is who we're playing. Um, a lot of times that changes things. You know, you may, we may have played a bunch of similar stuff in one game. Now we go against another opponent and we're playing totally different, you know, and it's because of the opponent. So it's a factor, but you have to take everything with a grain of salt. And it's a combination of who you are, what you do best, and how do you have to what how do you have to play to stop the other team? You're kind of building on that. Um, I've been talking to offensive players about how many unscouted looks they face and because of their the speed on this offense. And I've, I've you know, Wink Martindale always blitzed. He hardly blitzed against y'all, I'm told. And and you know, uh, Belichick with the three high safety look. How many times have you gone out of character this season and, and overall because of a specific opponent? Not to the degree that I think you're insinuating, but definitely um, it, you got fact you got to play what you need to play to compete with your opponent. So if that means you have to um, change something and do something radical, you can. But we've never gone out and created a whole new defense. You know, we do things different from week to week. But conceptually, the players know it. We're just getting to it a different way. And when, when you go out of character, uh, that's, a, that's good for the matchup, as you say, for the specific opponent. But 
you're doing something unfamiliar. At, at what point does that uh, not not jibe, I guess? Yeah, that's the fine line you have to weigh. You know, there's a lot of times you'll be sitting in there in staff meetings and you come up with a, a good idea or one of the coaches does, and but it'd be foreign to our players. And, and in the short amount of practice time you have, you wouldn't be able to perfect it to the degree you want to perfect it to be comfortable. So there, there's all that stuff and you know that goes into the final decision. Thank you. Last question. You're, you're, you're thinking well on uh, your decision to play Deshaun Elliott virtually all snaps or all the snaps with Holland. That said, do you have in the back of your mind a package that would take advantage of Brandon Jones' unique blitzing skills that he showed the year and a half prior to your arrival where maybe we might see that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs>